So one day I wanted to put chalk dash lines all around my neighborhood like I saw this girl on TikTok do. So I went to Walmart and got some spray chalk and some regular chalk. Then went home and tried to make a stencil out of cardboard but failed. Then I tested out some spray chalk and after that I measured the middle of the road and marked it. Then I tied some rope to a hoverboard to try to pull me but it failed. Then I made it longer and it still failed. So I tried walking, but that sucked, and I thought it'd be easier with some normal chalk, but it still failed. So I got out a hoverboard I thought was broken, and it worked perfectly. And when I ran out of one piece, I got a new one, and kept going all the way until the end of one side of my neighborhood. I ran out again, but kept going, and then was done. And then I went back home, got some more chalk, and went out to the other side of my neighborhood to get started. And I finished off the neighborhood and ran out of chalk. And then on the way home, my hoverboard died, so I had to carry it all the way home. And now here is driving before the lines, and here is driving after. So one day this local hammock guy asked me to come to this hammock stacking thing. I checked out the hammock and then went up the ladder to look at where all the hammocks would go. And after that it was time for me to get in, and the stacking began. I got in the next hammock and the plan was to just keep stacking until I was pretty high. And it was pretty fun up there. They added another hammock and it was pretty high, but I got up into it. And then I got up into an even taller one. And then an even taller one after that. <laughs> I got in the next one and waved at my brother. And in the next one after that, I blew my cap off. Then we added the final hammock, and I got in it. I was at the top of the world and just stared at the creek. And then I saw someone float on by like something I'd do. <laughs> and after that, I had to deflect all these water balloons being thrown at me. Then while trying to get down, this lady fell, and so did this other lady. And then I fell, but I caught myself like a boss and swung on down. <laughs> Then this dude did a bunch of spins in the hammock and also swung on down, pretty gracefully. I left and they gave me a hammock so I put it in my tree and got in. So one day I decided to take a moped out on the highway. I took off and headed out through my neighborhood. And I took it all the way to the highway where I floored it to a max speed of 40 and a 55. And it was so much fun, I was just living life. And eventually I turned off onto a more mild road where I went for quite a while just driving and admiring the view. It was really pretty and pretty cool. Then I came to an intersection and turned back around and stopped, got off and got a piece of grass, then got back on my moped and took off with the piece of grass. Well. And I went all the way back to the highway and then floored it and I went over the bridge but couldn't quite make it up the hill. And I think something broke so I pulled over, stopped, and it wouldn't go, so I got off and rolled it all the way back up to my neighborhood, then got tired, so my brother did it. So one day I ordered this zip line to put in a tree. I opened it up, and there was a lot of different random stuff I didn't know much about, so I had my dad help. <laughs> we took it out and decided on what tree to put it in, and then I got some stuff, dropped a ladder, put it in the tree, and attached this thing around it. Then I tightened it and added the actual zip line to it and got some more stuff. We talked about the instructions for a bit and then looped the handlebars on and wrapped the zip line around the other tree, which took until dark to get the slack out of. So we left and came back in the morning and my dad finished tidying it up. Then I tested my weight on it, you know, for safety, and went for it. And it was pretty fun. Don't try this at home though. Then here's my brother who went after me and he actually got pretty addicted to the zip line and went again. And here's me going without sitting on the seat. Yeah, I almost hit my feet on a lot of stuff. So one day I wanted to hoist this giant water balloon up into this tree. So I went to Walmart and got a lot of paracord and a tarp. Then I went home and laid out the tarp and the balloon and then I put the hose in and started filling it up. Until eventually it was big enough and I stopped the water, took the hose out and zip tied it. And it was pretty cool. We wrapped the tarp around it and then ran the paracord through all the holes. Then I climbed into the tree and threw the paracord over the branch as a pulley, but it was too heavy. So I unzipped it to let some water out and got in it and put my head in it. And then we let the water come out and we tried again, but failed again. So we attached the paracord to the truck and just broke the tarp. So then I let some of the water drain out and put it in a hammock and started filling it up back up again. And I sat on it and even laid on it. And then I started rocking it back and forth and it fell out. So I stood on it and then jumped on it and eventually it broke. Yeah. So sad. So one day I ordered a go-kart attachment for my hoverboard. I got all the parts out and then I looked at the instructions and tossed them. And after that I quickly realized I needed them and then I started putting everything together. I finished it all up and then strapped it to my hoverboard and then got on it and drove out the door. I drove to the driveway and then through a puddle and then down the road and I lost control. And then lost control again and hurt myself. <laughs>
You sound like a whale. I pulled it out of the ground and the hoverboard wouldn't work anymore. So I tried to fix it by tossing it. And when that failed, I got all sad. But then I had the thought, I'll just go to Walmart and blow all my money on a new one. So I got there, pushed the button, and then took it home. And then I put my go-kart attachment on it to ride it around. I kept riding, and then I also failed on a wheelie. And then I made my way towards a hill to go down it. And ended up losing control again and going into someone's yard and then doing it again. And then the next day, the broken one worked somehow, and I wheelied it and spun on it and finally drifted out. So one day, it was super windy, so I decided to take my hamster ball out on the lake. I was going to have to walk across this bridge to get to my launching point. I went until I got to the bridge, walking in my hamster ball. Yeah, pretty cool. Then I walked across and made it to the water. I just rolled into the water like this, and I was hoping because of how windy it was, it would just push me all the way to the other shore where I needed to be. I waved hi to my brother, and it was really cool in there. I tried to look for fishies underwater. Fish. And it perfectly worked. I floated to the other side until I reached the end of my journey. But it wasn't over yet, because I wanted to try one more time, but this time something interesting happened. I encountered a Karen. She came out of nowhere and then came up to me and said something, but I didn't even hear her, so I said, what? but no worries. She eventually wandered off into Karen land and I continued on my journey, making it all the way across. So one day I wanted to see what all I could destroy from dropping my band ball up high. So I went to Walmart, got a chair, a Hot Wheel, a lot of Diet Coke, a container, and a watermelon. Then I went home, set up a ladder, and dropped the Diet Coke, and it did nothing. So I threw it and then I dropped the band ball in another bottle. And when that failed, I shook it up and did it again. And it worked. And then my brother threw me one that I dropped. And after that, I decided to crush the Hot Wheel. And it held up pretty well. And then I dropped the 21-pound ball on the bin. And it did the most damage so far. But not enough. And after that was this tiny chair thing that got kind of broken, and I fell. Next, we dropped it on a water gun, and a piece came up. Then I shook the rest of the Diet Coke up and knocked them over. And then threw them all, one by one. And all this destroying was a lot like this game I've been playing where you drop and smash random stuff. Click the link in my bio if you want to download it. And lastly was the watermelon, and it got crushed. And I even ate some. So one day I wanted to see what I could cut in half with a power washer. I first got this broken ramp and it did nothing, so I got a stronger tip and it still did nothing. It also failed on ice cubes, but cut a banana clean in half. Then I got a piece of cardboard and cut it until it worked. After that, I took a piece of paper, folded it into a paper airplane, and sawed it right in half. Next, I got a plastic bottle that I ended up having to secure and cut. And it put a hole in the bottle. And next, I tried a can, and it did nothing until I went to pick it up. Next, I tried a plastic ball, failed, and a tennis ball, which actually kind of worked. It took, like, all the fuzz off, and at the end, it was pretty mutilated. Then I decided to do my foot. Ha, <laughs> it's like... So one day I wanted to make a giant paper airplane because my last one failed, so I went to Walmart, got some tape and some poster board, and then went home to start construction. I started by positioning four pieces together, and then I took some tape and taped them all together. Then I flipped it over and taped all the creases on that side. Next, I folded it in half, laid on it, and then unfolded it and folded all the little necessary folds in order to make the plane. I folded one side down, added some tape, and then folded the other side down and added some tape. Then I folded the plane in half and folded down one wing, and then folded down the other one. I added some more tape to it, and I was done. So I put it in my car and drove on out to a bridge to throw it off. It was kind of flooded, but I threw it anyway, and it totally failed. So I went down there, over a puddle, and into the woods to go get it. I got it out of the water, and it was totally destroyed. Like for part two for me to make a better one. So one day I decided to build a giant slingshot out of giant rubber bands that I used for my giant rubber band ball. We started by pouring concrete, mixing it up, because we wanted to make it super sturdy and movable. We did this with two buckets, then came back the next day, and they were pretty heavy. We put rubber bands around them, but they fell, so we added supports, then began putting a lot more bands. And it didn't work, so then I tried the slingshot I had, and that didn't really work either. And I gave up for a while, but I remembered I could just make it wider. And then it worked perfectly. Look at this baseball launching. So then I had the idea to set up a target and try to hit it. We had this glass thing here, and I was trying to hit it several times. I missed, went right past it, went right past it again, and then finally dinked it. But it didn't even do anything. Then I just chucked the ball at it, and it wouldn't break, so I hit it with a bat, then hit the baseball, and launched a pineapple. But it didn't go very far, so I threw it. And got out tape and a bunch of crates to try to knock it down. It fell like this, then I threw a bat and a rubber band ball and a shovel.
So one day I ordered this stuff called Great Stuff, which is basically expandable foam insulation. And my goal was to build a boat out of it. Not just any boat, a cardboard boat. Because a while back I had a series on TikTok where I tried to make cardboard boats float. And I was never very successful. But I used the best cardboard boat design I knew how to make. And then I was going to cover the entire outside in the Great Stuff. And hopefully it'll float. So I finished taping up the entire bottom like this and i already had a decent looking boat then we covered the entire bottom in the great stuff and then later we covered the rest of the sides and when i came back the next day it was solid looking and it was ready to be tested in the creek i walked it down and then got in and i started to float away it was working flawlessly without any problems so i just kept on rowing and having a good time and then i about ran into a tree and then i started heading out further and it was the best boat i'd ever made i just kept going so one day I ordered an inflatable couch to float down the creek in. I unwrapped it and then let it air up and got on it. And then folded it into a couch and my dog got on it. <laughs> then we took it outside, put it in my brother's truck and went to the creek. I sat by the highway and then carried it all the way down over the rocks and out to the water and out to the launching point where I pushed off. And it worked really well and was amazing. I continued on and then decided to lay down and just enjoy the ride. And then I almost ran into a tree. And I kept going out even further and waved goodbye to my brother. And before you know it, I was just gone. Out of sight of anything but the GoPro. But eventually I came back and dragged it all the way back to shore, up the rocks, and into the truck, and all the way home. So one day I bought a ton of cardboard sheets at Walmart to build the biggest cardboard boat I could make while still functioning. And I used to make cardboard boats all the time, but I hadn't made one in a while, and I felt like making a huge one. I pieced the boat together, taped it up completely, and taped all the flaps down, flipped it over, taped this, and then put a bunch of sheets in the bottom. And after that was taped completely, we flipped it back over, and then added another sheet, taped that down fully, and then I decided to add some Flex Seal. I did this to help waterproof the boat, and then I sprayed this on there but i ended up coming back the next day and adding another coat anyway because it felt flimsy still after that was done drying it was time to test it out at the creek i put it in the water got in and laid down that was the only way i could be stable the current wasn't very strong so i tried to row without much luck and then i saw a leak and the boat started to collapse in i kept on pushing trying to stay afloat but with no luck we eventually went down and i was never seen again mm, not really but i was pretty sad <laughs> Part 3 of making a rubber band ball. So this watermelon exploded and left us with this water rubber bands. So I turned it into this actual rubber band ball. And now we're here and I'm out of rubber bands. So I went to Walmart. I got some rubber bands and then went home and emptied them out and opened up a bag. And got busy. But after a little bit I left and then came back the next day. And finished off the pile. And then I dumped out two more bags and started placing them. But I got bored and ended up leaving and coming back again the next day to finish it all off. I placed rubber bands forever and then I went outside to test it out on my broken hoop. Yeah, it was hard to play with but it bounced really high. Here's it next to a basketball. Yeah. After that I went back inside to finish off the pile and then I dumped out another two bags and started placing rubber bands for what felt like an eternity. And I was finally down to the last bag. I put them all on and I was done. And it's pretty big but it's going to take like a million likes for me to keep going. <laughs> So one day I ran outside and saw a watermelon, so I ran to it. I picked it up and then ran it back to my house to open it up the only way I knew how, with rubber bands. I put some rubber bands on it and then I got a sheet for when it breaks. <laughs> and then I continued placing rubber bands on it with the help of my brother and it was starting to actually work. I kept doing it and then my brother drew a face on it. Henry! And then we just kept going until eventually we ran out of good rubber bands. So I was left with no choice but to run out in the rain, get in my car, and drive to Walmart. I got there, got my rubber bands, and then headed back home to get back to placing them. And eventually I could even see the indention in the watermelon. And then I actually predicted it. <laughs> it's gonna bust. When? Any second. Oh god. I just know it. Oh. Instant replay. <laughs> And it left this water rubber band. It's like for me to turn it into a rubber band ball, part two. So one day I decided to go for a run. So I got up out of my chair and took off in my kangaroo shoes. I didn't know where, why, or how far I was going, but I just kept running. I ran all the way to the street, and when I got there, I just kept going. I just continued on running through my neighborhood, one foot after the other. And before long, I had ran all the way out to the countryside. And I just still kept running. And I just ran until I went into a ditch, you know? <laughs> 
So one day I made this elephant toothpaste TikTok and it didn't really work, so I kicked it and tried again with different stuff and that kind of failed too. So I bought even more stuff thinking I just ordered the wrong thing by accident, you know, but no, that's not it. <laughs> So I tried again a week later with some more stuff, but first I was going to try it in a cup with a sample amount. And it kind of worked. So I went ahead and dumped all the stuff into the big jug to see if it would work. And it looked like it didn't, so I pretended to be a sprinkler, but then it started to overflow. And I sprayed it. So I've been making this giant rubber band ball, and it now weighs 8.2 pounds. But I want it bigger, so I went to Walmart, got a bunch more rubber bands, then went home, dumped them out, put some gloves on, then emptied out two bags of colored rubber bands, and got busy placing the entire pile. And after I finished the colored rubber bands, I dumped out three bags of normal rubber bands and placed that. I placed a bunch, but then left and came back the next day to place some more. It got tiring, and I placed a lot of rubber bands, so I left took another break and came back and started on it again. I was sure to place the whole bag this time, but I got too tired and had to leave and come back again the next day to finish it off. So that's what I did and I finished it up. And it was done. It weighed 10 pounds, was bigger than my head, and bounced pretty high. Like if you want me to keep going. So one day I went to Walmart to get a Power Wheels, but they were too expensive, so I left and got this used Viper that needed a battery instead. I went to the battery store and got what I needed, then went home, screwed off the seat, then put the new battery in, and screwed the seat back on, and got on it, and took off. And drove down the driveway and into the road where it wouldn't move. So I gave it a little push, and then I headed for the ramp where I made a massive jump. Then I drove pretty fast down a hill, but the problem was getting back up the hill. And we ended up having to carry it, and then I put it in my car and took it out to the country to really open it up. I drove out to the road and floored it. Gone I went, and then I ended up crashing. And I got up and ran into the field, leaving behind my awesome viper. Part 4 of making a rubber band ball. So this watermelon exploded and left us with this water rubber bands, and I've been adding a lot of rubber bands to it. And I said it would take 1 million likes for me to keep going, and it got 4 million. So I went to Walmart, got more rubber bands, and then left, went home set them down and opened them up and then the next day i got on that rubber band grind placing the entire pile on the ball and when i was done i left and came back again later to place another bag on and once i finished that ball it was pretty big like the size of my head i weighed it and it weighed five pounds and it also bounced pretty high and made a decent basketball for my broken hoop and after that my brother wanted to play some bands so i let him but he gave up and i ended up having to finish his pile off and after that, I only had one more big pile left, so I dumped it all out and started placing them. I finished it up and then started on the bag of thicker rubber bands. And now I'm out. This sucked a lot, and since the last post got like 4 million likes, it's going to take like 5 million likes now for me to keep going. So one day I decided to turn my brother's truck bed into a ball pit. First I taped up this hole, and then got all the ball pit balls from my hamster ball and dumped them out into the truck. Until eventually it was done and ready to take down the road. I jumped in it, laid down, and then just chilled. Then I got a GoPro and we headed out. And it was pretty cool just moving along through my neighborhood in a ball pit. <laughs> yeah, and I just chilled there. And then some almost came out, but I got them. I just sat there, moved some balls around, and we went all out through the neighborhood. And at one point it was pretty shaky, but for the most part, the ride was pretty chill. And I even laid down. Then we went back home and I got out and threw my GoPro in. I put my hand in there and found it. And then we put all the balls back in the hamster ball. Like if we should do something else with all the ball pit balls. Rubber band ball part 9. So a lot of people don't know that it started when this watermelon exploded and left me with this water rubber bands. And ever since then I've just been adding on to it and this is the entire compilation up until now. And I needed more colored rubber bands so I went to Walmart but they were out. So I got gas and went to a different Walmart. But they were out too so I went to another one and they finally had some. Then I went home, dumped out a bag, and then got busy placing the entire pile of rubber bands until I was done. And then I left and came back later. I dumped out the colored rubber bands and placed that entire pile. Then I found some more rubber bands in the floor, placed those, and then placed a bag of thicker rubber bands that I also found in the floor. And I was done. It now weighs 14.7 pounds, is the size of my head, and bounces pretty high. And it's also bigger than a basketball, like if you want me to keep going. So I'm back at it again with the rubber band ball, and I need more rubber bands again. So I went to Walmart and counted out like 12 packs of rubber bands in the floor, and then grabbed them all and went home. And I first started with the pack I ordered on Amazon to match the surface of the ball. And after I was done with that, I took a break and came back later to place all the colored rubber bands. I dumped them all out into a pile, which was a lot, and then began placing them for 
quite a while until I was done. And the scale said it weighed 39 pounds, so I double checked on another one and it said the same thing. It's really hard to throw and officially impossible to make a basket with now, but I can stand on it, kinda. Like if you think I should keep going. So one day I wanted to put my giant hamster ball that's filled with ball pit balls in the creek. So I got a pull noodle and some paracord, untangled the paracord, looped it through and tied it on. And after that I went to the creek to plant it all out. And the only problem was some cows. So I went home anyway, deflated the hamster ball and put it in my brother's truck. Then I took it down to the creek, got in it, and let it air up. Psh, until it was done. And then I made my way down, over the rocks and on out into the creek where I walked for a bit and then laid down and drank my water. And eventually my brother let go of the rope and I was off out into the current, alone in my hamster ball. Like for part two or watch the full video on my YouTube, Dylan Ayers. So I've been making this giant rubber band ball for quite a while now and I'm out of rubber bands so I went to Walmart and they had so many colored rubber bands. I got them and then went back to carry even more and then left. I went home and started with this pack I ordered and I placed the entire pile. And done. And then I took a break and came back later with all the colored rubber bands. I dumped them all out into a pile, which was a lot, and got busy placing them for what felt like an eternity, because this is probably the biggest pile I've ever placed. And it's huge. It now weighs 30 pounds, is way bigger than my head, is pretty hard to throw, and almost impossible to make a basket with, and I can even stand on it. Like if you think I should keep going. So one day I wanted to see what all I could crush with rubber bands. So I went to Walmart and got a water gun, rubber bands, some Dr. Pepper, and a jug of water. Then I left and went home. I dumped out two bags of rubber bands, shook up the two liter, and started placing a lot of rubber bands on it. And then I just decided to go throw it. Because I was scared it was going to blow up. So I threw it, and it didn't do anything. So I went and I tried again. And this time... It kind of worked. And it looked like this. And after that, I started on the water jug, alternating with my brother, because it was kind of tiring. And eventually, I started messing with the cap and accidentally made it come off. I was shocked. I drank some, and then I left and went inside to start on the water gun. I placed a bunch of bands on it and then realized it'd never break and left. So I've been making this giant rubber band ball and it now weighs 11.9 pounds and is the size of a basketball. And I was going to stop, but everyone wanted me to keep going. So I went to Walmart, got some more bands, then went home, dumped them out, put some gloves on and got back at it. I started by placing the pile of colored rubber bands because it's easier to place. And once I was done with that, I weighed it and it was 12.9 pounds and still bounced pretty high and made a good basketball. Then I went to Walmart to get more colored rubber bands, but they were out. So I just got the normal ones and went home, dumped that out and placed that entire pile. I finished it off. And it was now 13.4 pounds, and still the size of a basketball, and still bounced pretty high. <laughs> like if you want me to keep going and just see how big I can make it. <laughs> so one day I wanted to turn my bang chain into a real bang chain and take it to the pawn shop to see what they would give me. I put my chain in a container and filled it completely up with bang. I added a little more until it looked like this, and then I let it sit in the freezer overnight. I came back and it looked like this. The chain was super icy and tasted like bang. I thawed it out in the hot tub like this until it came off. And I had an actual bang ice block on my neck ready to take to the pawn shop along with this painting. I walked in so and said, really cool I told them I was saving the best for last and got this out. I asked if he could give me about $2.50. That didn't work out, so I moved on. I was looking at my rubber band ball. And I tried to convince him that it was worth. But I think he thought I was crazy, so I moved on to the best item I had. It's an icy chain. Does it belong to vanilla ice? It's actually made out of bang. How much you want for that? This is some heavy ice right here. I'll say this is worth 10k too. Hmm. Keep it in the ice chest. It won't melt. Well, yeah. I don't think I'd give you 10 dollars for it. I knew it was worth way more, so yeah. I had to walk. So one day I got an angle grinder and some paper to see what I could cut with paper. I glued two sheets together, cut it into a circle, and then I made the hole. After that, I screwed it onto the angle grinder, picked up some fruit, plugged it in, and then I turned it on and began cutting on the banana. And so far it was working. So I kept going, cutting further and further into the banana until eventually I'd cut the banana completely in half. So then I started in on the grapefruit, but my blade was too broken. So I made a new one, screwed it on, plugged it in and tried to cut the cereal box, but the blade flew off. So I made another one. Then I screwed it on, plugged it in, but the blade just flew off too. 
So I got mad, slammed the bucket, and then I walked off into a tree. So one day I filled this pull up with Orbeez in my last video, and then people wanted me to add more. And so I did. I bought like a few million more, added a bunch more water, then came back the next day, and it looked like this. And the Orbeez were a lot less watered down this time. It was just solid Orbeez for days. And when I would fall in it, I basically just got stuck, and then I tried to swim like this. Then threw some Orbeez at the camera, I tried to get on this floaty, and then skateboarded this little rubber band ball into the pool. Then I tossed it way up in the air to see what the splash would look like, and here's the slow-mo. Yeah, pretty cool. Like if I should fill this car with Warbies. So one day I ordered six giant bags of packing peanuts to completely fill up my storm shelter with them. And this is the inside of the storm shelter we're going to completely fill with all these bags. I started out with two to see what it would look like, added them all in until eventually it looked like this. I then dropped the third in and it kind of covered the camera. I went searching for it, found it, but here it is. It's already really full. It was crazy inside, really warm and kind of cozy. Here's me and what it looks like inside. And then it was time to add more. This is double. I got in, splashed around, and it was like four feet of just straight packing peanuts. I dove in like this, then tried to completely bury myself in them and hide like this. I was kind of peeking out, and then I did that, and then I went even further in. I then shut the door. It was really cool. Comment any other ideas you have for the storm shelter. So one day I ordered a life straw that's supposed to allow you to drink any water. I opened it up, read the package, and then tried to drink with it. And it had the wrong end, but the other end wouldn't fit. So I went and got a container, dumped my drink into it, and then drank out of the wrong end again. And the straw made it taste kind of funny, so I got up and went to test it on hot tub water. And let's just say it still tasted like hot tub water. I spit it out, and then I left and went to the creek to test out the creek water. This, I put my straw on the water and started drinking it. And... Tastes like water. I took another drink from the creek, and then I threw the straw around my neck and left. So I've been making this giant rubber band ball and people seem to never want me to stop. So I went to Walmart, got a bunch more rubber bands, and then went home to start placing them. I dumped out the little bags first and began placing all of those until I was done. Which took a while. <laughs> then I left and came back later to place all of the colored rubber bands. Which took even longer, but now it looks pretty. <laughs> I left again and came back to place the last bag of thicker rubber bands. And it was finally done. And it now weighs 17.5 pounds, is bigger than my head, and is pretty hard to catch when you bounce it. And now it's noticeably bigger than a basketball, like if you want me to continue this ball. So one day after getting this comment, I decided to make a potato gun. So I got out a saw and cut this PVC pipe to its measurement, and then cut the other one. And then I added primer and glue to fit the pieces on together. And then did this piece, and then that piece, and it was all together. I let the glue set overnight and then came back to put this ignition thingy in. And to be honest, I didn't really know what I was doing, so my dad helped me put it in. I glued it on and pressed the button and it worked. Then I got all the necessary stuff out, put a potato in, and put some hairspray in, and it didn't do anything. So my brother and dad helped me and the back blew off of it and wrecked the tree. I guess I didn't use enough glue on it. Do not try this at home and like if I should try again. So one day I decided to fill up a giant hamster ball with ball pit balls in it up with water. So I got in, let it air up, and then began filling it up with water. The water shocked me at first, and then I just let it fill up and stopped it before it got too heavy. I then laid in it for a second. It was pretty cool. And then I got up and went off and fell pretty hard. And after that, I got up and fell again. But I went out and then decided to lay down and put my face underwater. Then I just chilled in it pretty nice. I walked around for a bit, went out into the yard, slid in the balls, and then did a cannonball. And after all that, I decided to get out. Let me know what else I should do with it. So I've been making this rubber band ball for way longer than I thought I'd be, and I'm just gonna keep going. So I went to Walmart, and they were out of rubber bands, so I left and came back a few days later, and they had some. I went home, dumped them all out into a pile, and started placing them. And it's honestly just so satisfying to watch the pile go down. And when I was done, I left and came back later with a new bag that I ordered on Amazon. And the band seemed good, so I placed the entire pile until I was done. And it now weighs 23.6 pounds, is way bigger than my head, and it's really hard to throw, and even harder to make a basket with. But I made one. Like if I should keep going. <laughs> so I've been making this giant rubber band ball, and I'm just going to keep adding rubber bands every time Walmart restocks. So I went there, got a few more bags of colored rubber bands, then went home and started with the two bags I ordered on Amazon. I placed the entire pile until you couldn't see a colored rubber band in sight. And then I left and came back later to place the colored rubber bands I got at Walmart. And I placed it until I was done. It's huge and now weighs almost 26 pounds. It's super hard to throw and really hard to catch. But I can still make a basket with it and even stand on it now. Well, kinda. Like if you think I should keep going. 
So as you know, I have this giant rubber band ball, but now I want to make a little rubber band ball to show you how. I first wadded up a clump of bands and then wrapped them around each other until I had this. And then I started doubling up bands and adding them to the clump for a while until I had this. And after that, I just kept on going until I got to this. And it's pretty neat and bouncy. I went on for quite a while after this until it looked like this. And it's pretty cool and weighs a lot less than my other one weighing zero and this one weighing 28 and it's not even close to the size of my head here's me throwing the big one and now here's me throwing the small one now a basket with the small one <laughs> a basket with the big one eventually and throwing the big one and throwing the small one i had to run after it yeah they're both pretty cool so i've been making this giant rubber band ball and to be honest at this point i'll probably never stop so i went to walmart got a bunch more rubber bands then left went home dumped out all the colored rubber bands and began placing them until i was done with the entire pile which took a while but i did it then took a break and came back later to start on the pile of normal rubber bands and i placed that entire pile covering all the colored rubber bands so sad then took another break came back and dumped out all the thicker rubber bands and began placing them until i was out and the ball now weighs 19.2 pounds and is a lot harder to throw and way harder to make a basket with. Yeah, it's pretty big, so like if you want me to keep going. Part 2, putting rubber bands on a watermelon. So it exploded and left us with this wad of rubber bands. Oh so I decided to turn it into a rubber band ball with all the leftover rubber bands. I began by making the wad a lot neater and I discovered this. There's watermelon inside this. So I did my best to get it out and then kept making it neater and then eventually started placing actual rubber bands on it. <laughs> And after a while, I took a break to go shoot some hoops with it. And let's just say it's not a basketball, and I ended up breaking my backboard more than it was already. And then I waited until the next day at like 2 in the morning to start trying to place more rubber bands on it. I finished my pile and started placing another bag, and eventually I was down to the last one. And to be honest, it was a lot of time for very little difference, but I got another bag anyway and started placing them. I finished it up, and I had a ball, I guess. Let me know if I should even keep doing this. So this is part 18 of making this giant rubber band ball and I'm just going to keep going. So I went to Walmart and got like 9 packs of colored rubber bands, then left, went home, and dumped them all out into a giant pile and got busy placing them. And I placed the entire pile, which took quite a while. And then I left and took a break and came back later with this bag. I dumped it out and placed that entire pile. And eventually I was done. And it weighs a lot. Is bigger than my head, it's pretty hard to make a basket with, I can stand on it, and really hard to throw. Like if you think I should keep going. So one day I went to the party store and got a bunch of giant balloons and a helium tank. And then went home to see what I could make fly away. I already had two blown up, I blew up the first red one, tied it, and then I blew up the second blue one and tied it. And now I had four balloons. And then I twisted and taped all the strings together and tried to lift up a weight, but it failed. So then I tried an apple. And it worked. After that, I had an idea to tie a box to the strings and send something away. I trimmed up the box and forgot the fourth balloon. So I tied it on and then went outside. And taped a Tesla Hot Wheel to the box and tried to send it to space. And it went down. So I ripped off some cardboard and it still failed. I ripped off some more and it went to my roof, then fell off. I let it go a final time and it took off and left on into space. So one day, after everyone kept commenting, telling me to take my 1,000-pound rubber band ball back to the pawn shop like I did a year ago when it was only 100 pounds, I finally went back and showed the man a picture. Now, that is, looks like a wrecking ball. It now weighs over 1,000 pounds. Should you look at it tomorrow? Morning? And I convinced him to come out to my warehouse tomorrow morning to tell me what he thought it was worth. So the next day, he came out. There he is. Here's the ball. Everyone's been wanting ball. me to see it for a long time. The last time I brought it in the store, like only 100 pounds. Now it's 10 times the size. Wow. Try to move it. There's one big ball. I let him move it around and then I pushed it down to show him just how heavy it actually is. It's like a, a wrecking ball. Have you thought about maybe selling it to a wrecking ball company? I think it's like worth more and it's like artness. How much you want for I it? thought about the price and then told him how much I had in bands alone. Only a few thousand in the rubber bands. 500 wouldn't buy it. Just wouldn't be worth it. We can it. load it up if you want to sell it. I think I'm just going to have to pass and beat the world record, but... He didn't go high enough on the ball, so I just showed him some other stuff in the shop, including this ball and this aluminum foil ball. And I said he could have the aluminum ball for 100 but he said that wouldn't be a good return. So I've been making this giant rubber band ball, and it's getting pretty huge, and I'm probably not stopping. So I went to Walmart, got all the colored rubber bands they had, then went home, dumped out the bag of normal rubber bands, and placed that entire pile, which was kind of hard because of how big the rubber band ball is now. Then I took a couple days off and came back to place all eight bags of colored rubber bands, which took a while, a long while. But eventually I finished, and it's huge now. It weighs 21.6 pounds, and is a lot harder to throw and catch than it used to be, and almost impossible to make a basket with, like if you want me to keep going. 
So one day I filled an even bigger pool up with Orbeez. I filled the other one up with about 2 million Orbeez and I filled this one up with millions more. And we were going to reuse the old Orbeez in this pool too, but they kind of smelled bad. So we just went with all new and it looked like this. It was pretty insane looking and really colorful. There's millions and millions of colorful little orbs. I got in it and then splashed around then jumped in and tried to swim across then jumped off this mini trampoline. And I even put this inflatable zebra in there and tried to make it look like I was in a weird rap video and fell in like if I should add even more Orbeez. So one day someone commented on my video with a pool of millions of Orbeez that I should fill this car up with Orbeez. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. So with the help of my friend Brennan, we transferred a bunch of the Orbeez into this car. I got in and this is what it looked like. It was really cool. The Orbeez felt like a seat cushion. Look at them flying when I was driving. It was crazy. My legs were completely underwater on Orbeez and they were just flying everywhere. I kept on driving all around and then I decided to open up one of the doors to see what it looked like. And it was really cool looking. And then it slammed on me and they flew at me. I let some out here and then ran them over and then drove off. So one day I decided to prank my brother with fake spray paint on his truck. But I needed more so I went to Walmart and got some. And then I started with the blue just writing a bunch of random stuff and scribbling. And when I was out of that I got to the orange writing a bunch more random junk. <laughs> and when I ran out of that this side was pretty much done so I switched over to the next side and finished it. <laughs> and go ahead and like the video since I'm not making you wait for the reaction. And here it is. This is a joke right? What'd you do? What'd you do? This is fake right? It's real bro. This is real spray paint. And when he touched it, I think he realized it was fake. So we pulled it out to the cul-de-sac and washed it. And then he tried to spray me. Yeah. <laughs> One day I had Purple send me a mattress to test their famous raw egg test. They basically slam a bunch of eggs on the mattress and no matter what, it won't break the egg. Inside the mattress was these mini mattresses that were super stretchy because that's what they're made of. Then this mask, I opened up the mattress, unrolled it, cut open the plastic and it aired up. It was pretty comfy. I was actually super impressed by the comfort. My dog even liked it. I had all these eggs to put it to the test. I first crushed one with the mini mattresses like that and then I threw one at the mattress, tried to push on it, fall on it and it just wouldn't break. So I tried in the couch as well and it still wouldn't break. And even the rubber band ball wouldn't crush it. So then I tested the eggs, make sure they were still good. Yeah, they break. So I just chucked them as hard as I could, both at the mattress and the couch. They bounced off and then I tried the three egg drop test thing. I fell flat on my back eventually like that and the eggs were perfectly fine even after I fell like this. So I resorted to the thousand pound rubber band ball which actually crushed them and I was like I'm gonna take this cover off and see what's inside the mattress now and it was actually pretty cool. I ripped this thing open which I don't think you're supposed to do but it felt really cool. Look at it and it even holds the egg like this. Pretty cool mattress. So one day I went to this place that gets puppies from pet stores that have something wrong with them. And I decided to buy this puppy. She had a little hop and we took her to PetSmart to pick out a bunch of toys. We got this, this, this. And she was looking pretty happy. Got a collar. Then she itched like this and that was pretty funny. And eventually after about a week, her hop became more of a run. And she was quick running all over the place. And she seemed overall pretty happy. And she even became pretty good friends with our other dog, Gundy. And we ended up naming her Remy. Go follow her. <laughs> Part 7 of making a rubber band ball. So I've been making this ball and it's pretty giant now and weighs 10 pounds. But I wanted it bigger so I went to Walmart, got a bunch of colored rubber bands, then went home, dumped them out, put my gloves on, and first finished off the pile of normal rubber bands that was already on the table. And once I was done with that, I dumped out all the bags of colored rubber bands and began placing them. I did this for quite a while and the ball was finished and it was huge. And it now weighs 11.9 pounds and is almost the size of a basketball. And it also bounces pretty high. And I also shot it in the hoop. <laughs> and now I'm officially finished with it. It looks pretty cool. <laughs> Part 5 of making a giant rubber band ball. So I've been making this rubber band ball and I ran out of rubber bands so I went to Walmart. Got a bunch more rubber bands and then I went home, dumped two bags out, put some gloves on so I didn't break my skin again, and started placing the bands. And then left and came back the next day to finish off the pile. It looked pretty good so far, and then I forgot to video placing a whole nother bag. But it looks like this, and then I dumped out all the colored rubber bands and started placing them all on the rubber band ball. And I was done, and it was almost the size of my head and weighed 8.2 pounds. And bounced pretty high. And also made a decent basketball, like if you want me to keep going. So one day I was just scrolling through TikTok and I kept seeing this apple bottle trend. So I drove to Walmart and went to the juice aisle to look for it. But there was none. So I left and went to a nearby Dollar Tree to look. And there was none there either. So I left and went to Target to look. And all they had were these big bottles that didn't crunch like an apple at all. <laughs> and I bought the bottle I bit because germs. And then left, went home, and then went back to Walmart the next day to look again. And then to a neighborhood market that had them, or so I thought. I took them home, opened one up, and then bit into it. And it wouldn't crunch. 
That doesn't sound like an apple. I had got the glass bottles, but I drank it anyway, and it was pretty good, so I just kept drinking it. So one day, I ordered a human-sized hamster ball to run in the creek with. I took it outside, unboxed it, and unfolded it. I then plugged the air pump in and turned it on. And while it was filling up, I pulled all the folds out to make sure it filled up all the way. It was done, and I rolled it out to the grass and unzipped it, and all the air came out. Air pump. Yeah, I felt pretty dumb, but then I took it to my brother's truck to take to the creek. We got there, and I drank the bang to have energy like a hamster. <laughs> I got in the ball, and my brother started filling it up. It was pretty neat from the inside, and I liked the air. <laughs> and then it was done, and I ran towards the creek. I got in the water. Whoa! Like for part two. So one day, my family and I rented these cool scoot cars. I got in the green one, revved it up, and then took off. And traffic was kind of slow, so I stopped and beeped at a yellow one I saw. And then continued on down the coast. And my brother didn't like my driving that much, but I thought it was great. And we eventually made it to this curve thing where I raced my dad round and around. It was pretty hard to turn though, and I almost hit the curb. And my dad did hit the curb. <laughs> then I decided to ride passenger and just enjoy the ride and the view. And I saw a helicopter. Then we pulled up to this ice cream place where I got out and waited for my brother. Then went in and got ice cream. That they actually rolled up and put into a cup and then handed to me. And it was pretty good. I then switched to the red car and drove out to a gas station where I filled it up and then drove it back. So one day I got a package, so I took it upstairs, sat it down, and opened it up. And it was the Mighty Mug I ordered. This cup is designed to never spill. I put some bang in it to test it out, and it still knocked over after I hit it and threw a band ball at it and even placed it on the wall. So I took it to a different surface, and it worked. The cup would not knock over at all. So I started punching it, and when that failed, I tackled it, and tackled it again. And after that, I placed it in the middle of the road, and then ran it over with my hoverboard. And then I threw a basketball at it. And let's just say the Mighty Mug wasn't looking so mighty anymore. I took a drink of it, and then I threw it on the ground, and walked off like a boss. So one day someone commented that I should make a second rubber band ball, and I already have three. This one, this one, and my giant one. This one's huge. I can sit on it, but not sit on the other ones because they weigh 0.6 pounds and 15 pounds. Well, the giant one is 777 pounds, but I'm still waiting on a shipment of bands, so I'm going to add on to the other one. I just grabbed a bunch of random bands at Walmart, then went back to the warehouse, threw the ball on the table, dumped out a bunch of bands, and got to place them. I started with all the colored bands to make it look really cool, and it did. It ended up looking like this. It was cool. Then I moved on to these ones to make it really tight and compact. And after a while, I was done. Here it is. Rolled it off the table and compared it next to the giant ball, then my head, and then threw it as high as I could. And it's pretty bouncy and weighs 17 pounds. Like if I should keep doing this ball too. <laughs> so it's rubber band ball part 73 and I about knocked over a fan with it and struggled to make it over to the scale but weighed it in at 800 pounds. But we're going to add even more bands. And the ball still looks kind of broken, so hopefully after we place all these bands, it looks a lot neater. And the ball is finally getting close to 1,000 pounds, which is what the scale maxes out at. And we kept turning the ball to make it as round as possible and after a long while of placing bands we were finished and the ball does look a lot neater i jumped on it like this then it accidentally moved the couch when i was trying to make it over to the scale brendan tried pushing it on but failed alone so we both had to push it and it weighed 829 pounds then pushed it off and took it outside to show the cows yeah they thought it was pretty cool like if i should keep on going <laughs> So as you probably know, I've been making this giant rubber band ball, and I needed more rubber bands, so I went to Walmart. But they were out of the ones I needed, so I went to a different Walmart, and they had some. Then I went home, dumped them all out, and got busy. And sped up, this all just looks really cool. Anyway, I finished that pile, and took a break, and came back later to finish this bag I ordered. And sadly, it's a lot less colorful now. But I'm done, and it now weighs 28.3 pounds, and bounces decently, and I also made a basket. Like if I should keep going. So one day I went to the clearance aisle of Walmart to look for random stuff to buy and I found this pair of hover shoes. And I wanted to hover so I got them. I opened them up and they looked kind of used. <laughs> but I still got on them and tried to ride but failed at first and eventually got the hang of it. And they didn't actually hover and were basically like a hoverboard in two separate pieces. It kind of reminded me of roller skating. I also tried to stand on one foot and failed. Then I spun around and drove backwards. Then my brother tried them and failed at first but eventually got the hang of them. Kind of. <laughs> Pretty neat. So I've been making this giant rubber band ball and it's pretty big now, but everyone wanted it bigger. So I went to Walmart to get more bands, but they were out. So I went to a different Walmart and got some, then went home, set down a pile of bands and got busy placing the entire thing until it was done. And then I dumped out a few more bags and first placed the bag of smaller rubber bands and then the bags of thicker rubber bands until I was done with that. 
and it now weighs nearly 16 pounds and still bounces pretty high but it's hard to catch now <laughs> and it makes a decent basketball like if you want me to keep going so one day i decided to buy two giant pumpkins one 500 pounds and the other 250 pounds we took them on a trailer to the warehouse and then scooted them off into the beanbag and then onto the floor this one was the hardest weighing 500 pounds but we got them all off and here they are compared to my 800 pound rubber band ball we weighed this one to be sure and it was 240 but this one was too heavy to weigh we flipped up the 300 pound pumpkin and dumped out a bunch of giant rubber bands to try to place them all around we it. were going to see if we could cut it clean in half and like 30 seconds after i got up it started to buckle in and did this i lifted up the top and there was a wad of giant messy rubber bands and a vine it looked really cool inside and then i decided to dump out a bunch of little rubber bands to place around this one and tighten it up so i can make a cool ball but it didn't really bounce very well let me know what i should do to the other pumpkin so it's rubber band ball part 84 and i got another big box with five five pound bags of rubber bands and since the bands are too big to get on the ball now we're gonna have to loop them into two giant strands like this we spent about an hour doing this looping the entire pile until we had two giant strands and we didn't know the best way to go about putting them in the ball we moved everything out of the way and then realized eventually if someone was standing on a chair and then we ran around it was easy but it made us really dizzy eventually we finished off the entire pile using this method and then for the second pile we moved the ball over a little bit to add bands on this side and we figured out wrapping around like this was a lot easier and took like half the time and the ball actually looks pretty cool now i stood on it and then we pushed it onto the scale and it weighs about 1070 pounds like if i should keep on going so one day after i made a video with these moon shoes the company sent me a box which contained the original moon shoes a yo-yo ball and these soccer boppers that i let my brother hit me in the face with i then opened the moon shoes and was kind of confused i had to wrap a bunch of rubber bands to it like this i then stood on it and it was pretty stable here's what it all looked like i then strapped them on my feet and headed out the door with the help of a cane and the shoes were a little bouncy but very hard to run in yeah i'm not much faster <laughs> and here's my brother bouncing in slow-mo and then he fell <laughs> So it's giant rubber band ball part 77 I saw these little rubber band balls at the store so I had to buy them all and compare them to my giant 895 pound rubber band ball. Mine was a lot bigger. I opened one up like this and compared it and yeah mine was way bigger. <laughs> We're gonna make it even bigger and I'm hoping in the next month I can get this ball all the way to a thousand pounds. And we noticed the ball was kind of egg shaped and it made it hard to place bands so we moved it and put wedges down so the ball wouldn't move and placed it like this and it helped a lot. It really helped round out the ball and make it look a lot better. We placed the final band and we were done and the scale still broke but the ball should be about 920 pounds so one day i went to walmart to get a bunch of bars of soap to make one of those satisfying soap videos i went home opened up one of the bars of soap and got to cutting it and it was actually working and looked so satisfying it would just curl up and be a little strand and then i cut it into a brick shape and cut all that which was really cool next up was the green bar and it was also really cool so I made it into a brick also, and it was even cooler than the other one. A bunch of tiny stuff just scraped off. And next up was the dove, and I about chopped my finger off because it was so hard to cut. Then I mutilated this bar and totally didn't fake this knife throw. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so one day I took a power wheels to a fast food place. I got in and drove on up after a lot of struggle. <laughs> and then I pressed the button to order my food. I would like a corn dog and a large tot. All right, thank you. Then a car drove by and said, uh, 500. Thank you. My daddy bought it. I then sat there, waved at the camera, then played with all the car's buttons. <laughs> and eventually my food came. A corn dog and a large tot. Yep. All right, thank you. Much. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Then I drove away with my food, and I think this is going to become my new go to vehicle. And it was a good corn dog. So one day people wanted me to fill this giant water balloon up and smash it with my over 1300 pound rubber band ball the problem is this ball is super hard to move we barely got it outside wow. stood on it like this and then we began filling the water balloon up it's supposed to be about six feet but i'm not sure how big we'll be able to get it we stopped it at a pretty decent size and then tried to roll the rubber band ball to and it. the huge ball had to go up a slight incline which made it really hard we got it on the balloon but it didn't even pop it, it wasn't exactly easy to keep trying so we just threw this little rubber band ball on it like this and it wouldn't pop until eventually I just threw it like this and then bam, all the water went everywhere. Now we're rubber band ball part 81 and I bought this new scale that weighs up to 5,000 pounds. It weighed the ball in at 990 pounds and today we're going to get it over 1,000 pounds. I also wanted to try some different strategies, these big mover bands and looping these 12 inch bands. I thought looping these 12 inch bands sounded the easiest because you could just loop them together and then wrap them around. We dumped out a bunch of bands like this and then started looping. We looped for a while and decided to go ahead and place one on and it looked pretty good so we kept on going until we had the entire pile finished. We ended up with these two giant lengths of bands. We wrapped one all the way around it which made 
made me kind of dizzy and then wrapped the other one until we were done and the ball looked pretty good we weighed it in over a thousand pounds finally i was pretty excited so now we just got to get to the new world record like if i should keep going so one day after buying two of these 30 foot balloons one that popped to a plunger and one that i tried to air up all the way but the wind took a hold of it and popped it so i bought a third one now to finally try to get it to 30 feet i waited for a non-windy day and was sure to even wear gloves so i didn't get oil on the balloon it kept on blowing up until eventually there were striations in the balloon and it popped here it is slow-mo several times. So that's maximum height. There was even a big cloud of dust. Common any other ideas. One day I decided to take this 500 pound pumpkin and carve it, make a jack-o'-lantern, and then do a giant elephant toothpaste experiment in it. And I just started off with a regular pumpkin carving kit, which wasn't going very well, so I started using a saw. Got the top off, and it was super thick. It was insane. And we began hollowing it out using a bunch of different methods. The spoon, a shovel, the crowbar. And it all only took about 20 minutes until it was looking pretty good. And the pumpkin was ready to carve. I drew a pretty basic looking jack-o'-lantern face and began cutting. It actually was going pretty smoothly with the knife that came in the kit. I was shocked. I cut out the nose, the eyes, and the mouth, which was the hardest part, until it was done. It looked really good and it was time for the experiment. I poured the stuff in a bucket inside the pumpkin and then it was ready to go. And it went really fast and shut out the eyes and everything. And for not even measuring anything, it turned out pretty good. It looked really cool. I can't believe elephants brush their teeth with this stuff. So one day, about a year ago, I got this water gun that could shoot really powerful. And here's me getting shot in the back with it. It kind of hurt, but they came out with a new one. And since I broke my other one with boiling water, I decided to try it it's out. It's basically the same gun with a different design. Here's me acting like I was going to shoot Alex and letting him shoot me, then shooting the camera. The basketball hoop, then this can that got completely destroyed. Then I decided to fill it up and shoot my friend Brennan on full blast. I waited for him behind the bush, and eventually he came. It was fully charged up, and it hit all the way to him. Then he ran, I chased him down a little bit, then shot him again, and he shot me, and then I shot a bunch. So it's rubber band ball part 76, and I tried to prove it weighs 870 pounds, but the scale's been broken, probably from the rubber band ball, but we're just going to keep adding bands anyway. We dumped out a huge pile of rubber bands and got to place it. And this really is a lot more work than it looks like, band after band for so long. We flipped it to make it cover the blue side, and then we were done. It looks really good, and it's probably within 5 pounds of 900 pounds. Here I am laying next to it, and then jumping on it, and trying to run on it. I pushed the ball, tried to get a run, and then fell, and then did it again. Kind of got one. Yeah, pretty cool like if i should keep going to a thousand so one day someone commented saying i should throw these giant orbies at cars in the street and i'm gonna do that but first i want to test some other stuff out throwing against the wall dropping one throwing one at my friend tossing one in this pool of orbies and comparing them lighting them on fire which didn't do much so then i tried putting them in the microwave which didn't do much until we put it in for over 30 seconds and they all started popping and were really hot to touch then i tried crushing them with this ball look at the slow-mo and then it was time to throw them at this car which i think they got mad so i just ran so it's rubber band ball part 72 and the ball's a little messed up from a video that's not out yet but it still weighs 775 pounds so we're gonna keep on adding bands and this time i got these special blue bands and we began fixing up the ball and making it look cooler with these blue bands and we kept on rotating it that way the bands would be spread more evenly and it would be easier to place the bands and after a very long time we were done i about crashed into the wall then jumped on it and dropped my phone now this ball is completely insane here's next to the little ball next to me and then i struggled to put it on the scale but got it and weighed it at over 800 pounds like if I should keep on going. <laughs> So one day I found my old kangaroo shoes I hadn't seen forever. They're supposed to make you run and jump super high. I put them on and struggled. I remember how hard they were to use. I walked for a little bit, then tried jumping, and I was struggling, so I put my hood on for safety. I then went over to the hoop, picked up a basketball, and shot it. It went right in. I guess it makes you better. But then I couldn't pick it up, so I went over to the ball and tried to see if I could really run on these. Here I am running, then dunking, and then running out in the wild, then trying to race my dog. She kind of took the lead. Then I started walking because I kind of lost my balance, but they're pretty cool. So one day I saw a TikTok of a guy making one of those spinny art paintings and it looked really cool like this and I was like I could try that and make one. I put some flex tape on some screws in wood, made the frame, and then I squirted some red, white, blue, and green in the corners until I had this. It looked pretty neat so I took it outside and started spinning and it kept on going and going until it looked like this and I didn't think I was going fast enough so I tried again but it still looked the same. And yeah mine wasn't quite as good as the other guys but let me know what you think. So it's now rubber band ball part 71 and this ball is insanely massive at 750 pounds but we're going to make it even bigger. And this time half the bands are these half inch bands that I've never tested before so we'll see how they go. And the bands were just really tight so we ended up moving the ball to see if it would make it better and it did because none of the bands been placed on that side that much. And it also helped make the ball more even but eventually after a long time we were done. The ball is huge. Here I am trying to stand on it and walk on it and almost fall. I dropped some Orbeez on it, threw a water balloon at it and crushed a water balloon and then weighed it in at 770 
27 pounds. So, like this video if you want me to keep on adding bands. So one day, it was rubber band ball part 75, and I rolled it across the warehouse, and then put it on the scale, and it weighed 842 pounds. We dumped out a whole bunch more rubber bands, and got to place it. The ball is really heavy and hard to move around, so we do our best to not place the bands in the same spot, and try to keep it as round as possible. We finished the pile, and the camera just doesn't do the ball justice. I've moved it to the distance to kind of get an idea of how big it is, and then I slammed into the ball, dunked on it, totally done. And then tried to move it with the hoverboard, but failed, so I spun around and put it on the scale. But we kind of broke it, and it wouldn't read. But it's probably 870. So one day someone commented that I should put really long pants on my kangaroo shoes to make it look like I was just super tall. But I couldn't find pants big enough, so I had to figure out how to create my own. I took two pairs of really big cheap jeans that I cut up to get around the kangaroo shoes like this, and duct taped it all on. I looked like some kind of weird cyborg, but it didn't look half bad. I tried to stand up with a fail, and then it was eventually up, and I felt pretty tall. I played basketball with the jeans on, and I finally looked like an NBA player. I then just took it outdoors where I looked like some type of farming cyborg. Then I just ran off into the jungle. So this is my rubber band ball and here's the world record. My ball is currently 1400 pounds and a long way from the record at 9000 pounds but we looped all these bands 50 pounds to be exact until it was finished and then we were ready to place them on the ball to get it one step closer to the world record. And just by leaving a like on this video you can help aid in the journey to beating the world record. Here I am rolling and then falling off the ball like this and here's the ball in all of its awesomeness. So I'm now all the way to rubber band ball part 70. It knocked over all these crates. And then I zeroed out the scale and weighed it in at 730 pounds. And it was time to add a bunch more bands. So my friend Brennan and I got busy placing this entire pile, which took so long. And we ended up taking a break and coming back the next day to finish it. But eventually it was done. And the ball is now even bigger. Look at it next to my head, me jumping on it. Then me rolling it to Brendan. Him rolling it back even faster than dunking on it. And we weighed it back in at 755 pounds. So like if you want me to keep on adding bands. So it's rubber band ball part 74 and the ball won't fit through a doorway. It's over 800 pounds and it's looking kind of rough. But we're on our way to 1,000 pounds and we're going to get it we there. We dumped out a bunch more bands and we've been using this same band for a while. They still work on the ball but we almost need bigger bands. We kept on placing until it was done. And it's actually getting hard to jump on because it's so tall. I pulled a stray band onto it and then crushed this box and then pulled it to the scale. And at first the scale was acting broken but eventually it weighed in at 842 pounds. So like if you want me to keep on adding bands. It's now rubber band ball part 78 and the ball is so close to a thousand pounds. The scales broke but the ball should be about 945 pounds and we're placing a bunch more bands. We eventually rolled the ball to a higher point that way it would be easier to get the bands around the ball. We did this for a while until eventually we were done. This band flew in the sky. The ball should be about 970 pounds and it's huge. My friend Brendan did this then I fell off it onto a bean bag and like if I should keep on going. So one day, about a year ago, there was this trend on TikTok where people were making these abstract paintings and selling them on eBay for a high amount of money. I made these two on my own that ended up bidding for a lot, but never sold. But I'm going to try my luck again. I went to Hobby Lobby, got a big canvas and some paint, and I was ready to make a highly valuable art piece. I decided to model it after my giant thousand pound rubber band ball. I started spreading out this blue paint, and then a lot more, and then just dumped a bunch trying to fill the entire background and make it blue. And after it was done drying, I came back with the yellow with a lot of swirls, trying to make the ball as abstract as possible and look really cool. I added the green and started kind of just doing that and mixing around until it looked like that then i started splattering paint everywhere the white stuff and trying to make it look starry and cool and it ended up looking like this i really liked it i took some pictures of it made the listing and i called it time ball and gave it a really abstract bizarre meaning follow to keep updated so one day people were commenting saying my over 1400 pound rubber band ball is boring now because it can barely move. But at the end of the video this ball will be over 1500 pounds and I'm going to prove that we can still move it by knocking down a bunch of bowling pins. We finished looping all 50 pounds of bands and then placed it perfectly on the ball like this. And then it was time to set up these pins. I set them up, tested them out, and then set them up again for the rubber band ball. And the ball can roll with a lot of effort but it's really hard to get it to go where you want it. We eventually knocked over a bunch of pins and then crushed this pin like this. So comment if I should keep the series alive. So one day I decided to cartwheel across America. Well, like half of America. I cartwheeled way out of my neighborhood and on down into Arkansas, where I cartwheeled for quite a while until I made it to Mississippi, where I also cartwheeled for a while, but not quite as long. And then on up into Alabama, and then from there, clear on up into Florida, where my cartwheeling eventually got pretty bad. But the point is, I kept going clear on out to the ocean and on into the water. Yeah.
One day someone commented saying I should freeze the Jumbo Orbeez, so that's what I'm going to do. I put them in the freezer, and the next day they looked like this. They were all stuck together, and it wasn't as cool as I thought it was going to be. I tried putting hot water on it, and it didn't really fix it. But I ordered some more Jumbo Orbeez to test another comment, which was pouring lighter fluid in to see if it would soak them and light them on fire. But when I came back the next day, it didn't soak up any of the lighter fluid. I was disappointed, but I had one more idea, pouring all these little Orbeez onto this trampoline and jumping, which it looked really cool. Then I did a flip. So it's Giant Rubber Band Ball Part 82, and I got a sample amount of these giant green rubber bands to test them out. They work really well, but for now, I only have these rubber bands. The ball's just over a thousand pounds, and these bands barely work anymore. They're way too tight. We had to prop the ball up as tall as possible to even fit the bands. But after a long time, we were done with the entire pile. It's a little wonky, but here it is. Then here's me jumping on it, rolling around a little bit, and jumping off. And it was time to weigh it in. We got it on the scale, and it was going back and forth between 1,020 and 1,040. Like if I should keep on going. So one day someone commented that they didn't think the giant balloon I bought was 30 feet. And yeah, I might not have had it aired up all the way, so we're going to try in this video. I got a completely new balloon, aired it up inside, but I thought it was too big to try and get to full height inside, so I tried to take it outside with a rope and the air pump attached to it. But the problem was it was way too windy, and the balloon felt like it was being vacuumed from the sky all the way up until eventually it popped. And bam, there went one really expensive balloon. <laughs> So one day my comments were amazed I was able to destroy a Nokia. So here I have another one that I bought for 25 cents. And when I slammed it, the back just flew off of it. So then I tried to roll my rubber band ball on it and it was just kind of awkward because it wouldn't really go over it right. Eventually I just laid it down right here to run it over like this. We looked at it afterwards and it was pretty crushed. But I wanted it to be completely totaled so I smashed it with this brick. And then I took his son, the younger Nokia. So I'm now to part 69 of my giant rubber band ball and it's now over 700 pounds, but we're going to get it even bigger. I dumped out 25 pounds of bands to place on the ball and I started placing with the help of my friend Brendan. And we actually placed three bands at once the whole time to make it go by a lot quicker until eventually we were done. I stood on it and then tried to walk on it and tried to walk again. It was actually kind of successful. Then I pushed it over here, dropped this ball on it, jumped on it, and then we tried to figure out how to get on the scale and waited in at 727 pounds. So like if you want me to keep on adding bands. <laughs> So one day I ordered Jumbo Orbeez to see if they were that much bigger than regular Orbeez. I filled it up in this container full of water. And I didn't know how much water to add, so I just added this much. And 24 hours later, it all looked like this. They were really big. <laughs> Here's a size comparison to regular Orbeez. They looked like little bouncy balls, so then I tried to bounce them, and then this one broke. So then I took this one and bounced it and broke it like this. But they look so cool, I decided to taste one. Don't try them. <laughs> then we found this clear one that turned me upside down, and this one was even more round. So let me know what else I should do with these. So I'm now at a rubber band ball part 80, and I'm going to add all these rubber bands to my 970 pound ball. And after this video, the ball should be within inches of a thousand pounds. And we don't know for sure the weight because my current scale is broken, but I have a new one that weighs up to 5,000 pounds on the way. Eventually, we finished the pile, and it looked like this. It's insane. I crushed a can, then drank the rest of it, and then here's it next to my head, and here's the broken scale, like if we should keep on going. <laughs> So this is part 83 of my over a thousand pound rubber band ball. I bought a bunch more of these stretchier bands to try to put on the ball because they're a lot easier than the other bands, but they're way more expensive. And I put a poll on my YouTube to see if people wanted me to keep going or cut the ball in half and 90% say keep going. So that's what I'm going to do. And if I want to beat the world record, I'm going to have to find a cheaper way to add a lot more weight really fast. And the scale wasn't really reading right because we kept knocking it off on accident, but the ball should be around 1,050 pounds. Like to keep on going. So one day I bought a 30 foot balloon to try to pop it. I covered my head and then I got white stuff in my nose and then tried to air it, it up. It was really cool and it made like these waves. It aired up for a little while until it was completely full. I untied it and then wrapped some rubber bands around it and look at it. I hit it, did some ripples and then here's it next to the rubber band ball. I shot it with a Nerf gun, then shot a giant rubber band at it, punched it, let it run, hit it some more and it wouldn't pop. So I threw a basketball at it and then flex sealed so one day on it, bam. Then got out a plunger and tossed it at it and it went pop. Like if I should buy another one. <laughs> So one day I ordered that TikTok apple juice stuff because all I could find in the store were these glass bottles that didn't crunch. They tasted good, but no crunch. Now we're going to find out if it's actually real. Ready? What? Wait. And we both just sat there in amazement, and then I compared it to a real apple. And it sounded more like an apple than an apple. Uh-huh, and you thought it was editing. Then I threw the real apple and ran off yelling, 